The Grand Strand in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, a popular and relatively safe place for families and spring breakers. Then one night, everything changed when 17-year-old Brittany Drexel walked out of this hotel, never to be seen or heard from again. And I felt in my heart that, you know, she had made this decision that may have cost her her life. What happened to you, baby? Where did you go? Now, seven years later, the FBI may have found the answer to that question. There's people that know exactly what happened. But what one jailhouse snitch is telling the feds is beyond unthinkable. A disposal of the body and what they call the pet. Just the look in her eyes, I can just picture it. And it just plays over and over in my mind every day. But Brittany's mom and dad can only hope and pray it's not true. You just don't want to believe that. No. If you were fired, oh, when just fall again. Brittany was Dawn's firstborn child. She was just full of life. A fun-loving kid who relished being the center of attention. Brittany, she was so energetic. When the ball breaks, the cradle breaks. But Brittany's mother Dawn and father John were both only teenagers when she was born. Well, we're pretty much uh, babies ourselves. And Brittany was just a few years old when the childhood sweethearts went their separate ways. Dawn staying in Rochester, New York, and John moving to Tampa, Florida. Unfortunately, me and Brittany didn't see each other. Until finally being reunited more than 10 years later when she was 16, as John recalls in the first interview he has ever given. So that you had a lot of time to make up for. That's exactly what it was. We, we just clicked like in five minutes. It was just such a great moment. What went through your mind when you first saw her? She looked like me. Her attitude, her looks, just, I was in awe. I, I don't, there's no words for it. I was very, just very happy. Brittany had grown into a fine young woman and John was just getting reacquainted with his daughter. I would fly up to go see her, take her shopping, go see the movies, uh, go to restaurants, just anything I can do to spend time and get to know her more. He wasn't to know that in less than a year after their reunion, he would be losing Brittany again. This time forever. In retrospect, how precious is that year to you now? It's very precious. I'll never forget it. It'll always be in my mind. For weeks before her disappearance, Brittany had been bugging her mother about going to Myrtle Beach with some friends for spring break. And I told her, I said, no, Brittany. She goes, why? Nothing's gonna happen to me, Mom. I said, Brittany, there's no parental supervision. I don't know these kids you're going with. And I said, something's gonna happen to you. So Brittany asked her mom if she could spend a few days at a friend's home in Rochester. They had put this person on the phone and I thought I was talking to a parent, and I told her that she could stay since, you know, it was her spring break. But it wasn't a parent, and instead, Brittany hopped in a car with three girlfriends and sneaked off to Myrtle Beach. Brittany never lied to me, as far as I knew. You know, I trusted her. And Brittany would maintain the charade by phone right up to the day of her disappearance. I said, what are you doing later on? She said, oh, we're just gonna hang out here for a while and then we're gonna go back to my friend's house and watch a movie and we're just gonna hang out. She says, I'll see you tomorrow, I love you. And I told her I love her too. And that was the last time I talked to her. Then tomorrow came and Dawn would learn the truth in the worst way imaginable. Getting a call from Brittany's boyfriend, John Greco, who had stayed behind in Rochester. He's like, she's in Myrtle Beach and they can't find her. I said, what do you mean they can't find her? And my heart just sank. I thought that she was here the whole time. And I felt in my heart that she had made this decision that may have cost her her life. What do you call that? A mother's intuition. John told Dawn that Brittany had suddenly stopped returning his text and that none of her friends in Myrtle Beach had seen her since the previous night. We kept calling her and calling her. I started calling her cell phone myself, getting no answers. And that's when I was like, we gotta go down there. 
I have to leave. I have to go down there and try to find her. I said, well, I'm packing. Uh, I'm on the way as well. Next, John, Dawn, friends, and police piece together the story of Brittany's last hours as they scour Myrtle Beach trying to find her. Never imagining it would be another seven years before they got any idea of what might have become of her. I just can't get it out of my mind what they did to her. How they brutally murdered my beautiful daughter. Or did they? I want to give you the opportunity to defend yourself. Have you ever met Brittany Drexel?